ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل له ومن يذل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا كولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم <تصفيق> ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has blessed us with Islam who has graced us with Iman who has favored us with Ihsan All praises due to Allah who has blessed us to be amongst the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who has blessed us to be amongst the Ummah of the Qur'an Brothers and sisters, never neglect the Qur'an. Never neglect the Qur'an. Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءُ وَرَحْمَةُ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ That we have sent down in the Qur'an that which is a source of cure and mercy for the believers. وَلَا يَزِيدُ الْغَادِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا and it only increases the disbelievers in their loss. وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءُ وَرَحْمَةُ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يُزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا So the Qur'an, brothers and sisters, is a cure. Allah Ta'ala says it is a cure. شِفَاءٌ لِلْشِفَاءُ شِفَاءٌ It is a cure. What does it cure? First of all, it cures ignorance. Most people out there, they don't know what this life is all about. They're ignorant to their purpose on this earth. They're ignorant as to their destiny and their destination. They're ignorant as to how they should live their life. It is the Qur'an that cures that ignorance. It is the Qur'an that tells us why we're here. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I've only created the jinn and humans that they worship me. I've only created the jinn and human that they worship me. We're here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who reject the worship of Allah, they only replace the worship of Allah with the worship of something else. Because this propensity to worship Allah ta'ala is placed within us. It's just a question of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is called Islam or worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is called shirk. Some people, their idolatry 
especially in this day and age when you generally speaking you don't find people prostrating to idols there are some remote corners of the world where this happens but generally speaking you don't find people prostrating to idols you don't find people prostrating to stone carvings generally speaking the new idols are money the new idols are clothing the new idols are love of self, narcissism. And all of these have been identified. The Prophet وسلم, he mentioned ruin. Taisa Abdul Dihra Dinari Abdul Dirhami wa Abdul Khalisa. Taisa when takas wida shika falan takash. Ruin is the worshipper of money. Taisa Abdul Dina. The worship of gold coin, wa Abdul Dirham, the worship of silver coins, wa Abdul Khamisa, the worship of the nice garment. So people worship money, people worship clothing. They get their paycheck, they go right down to whatever the local clothing store is, men's warehouse, or homeboy's hip hop garb, or whatever it might be. And they repeat this cycle, and the closet fills up with clothing. They worship clothing. If they don't have the proper clothing, they feel their life is incomplete. Some of our young people are caught up in the worship of clothing, they won't go to school. If they don't have the latest this, that, or the other, they're going to depression. Why are you sad? You were smiling 10 minutes ago. I just saw so-and-so walk by head on at this, that, or the other, and I don't have one. So now I'm depressed. This is worship. Taisa Abdul Dirna, Dirham, Abdul Dinar, Abdul Dinar, Abdul Dirham, Abdul Khamisa, the worship of clothing, the worship of money. How do people worship money? The money tells them what's halal or haram. So the religion doesn't define halal and haram. Islam doesn't say what's halal or haram. Money says what's halal or haram. And when one gives preference to that over the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a form of idolatry. When Allah says alcohol is haram, and the love of money says sell it, says sell it anyway. Allah ta'ala says cocaine or heroin is haram, and the love of money says sell it anyway. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to exploit People and oppressed people is haram. And the love of money says sell the pornography anyway. Then this becomes their worship of pornography or their worship of drugs or their worship of alcohol. Because it tells them what's halal or haram. It defines their action. The Prophet ﷺ said ruined is the worshiper of money. Ruined is the worshiper of, of clothing. Ruined is the worshiper of anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the true source of liberation. And the Qur'an provides us that direction as believers. And that's the cure of the Qur'an. The Qur'an so it cures ignorance. What are we doing in this world? Without the Qur'an people don't know. As Muslims we know to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where, where is our destiny? Where are we headed? The Quran tells us we're headed for Jannah. If we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and unfortunately some people are headed for hellfire. Tilka darul akhira. This is the home of the hereafter. Tilka darul akhira tinaj'aluha lilladina la yuridun uluan fil ardi wa la fasada wa la aqibatu lil muttaqeen. This is the home of the hereafter we've made for those who do not de desire to exalt themselves in the, worth, in the earth, nor to work, work corruption therein, and the end will be for the righteous. So we're here to strive for the hereafter. We're here to strive to place ourselves in the ranks of the righteous. Ya yuhalladina amana taqullah wa kunu ma'as-sadiqeen. O you who believe, be mindful of Allah and keep yourself in the presence of the truthful. We're here to be with the people of truth. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to be with them and to shun and avoid the people of falsehood. This is the cure of the Qur'an. 
It also cures the diseases of the heart. If you read the Quran and you focus on its message, the jealousy will go from your heart because you realize life is too precious to spend in petty envy. You realize that the Quran and the meanings of the Quran that connects us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is too sweet to be concerned about who has this, that, or the other that we might lack. The Quran is too sweet. The meanings are too rich to be concerned about the dunya and what someone might have from the dunya that we might lack. This is the cure of the Quran. It, cu it cures the, the disease rather of ignorance. It, de it cures the disease of envy. It cures the disease of dishonesty. When we read the stories of the Quran as we just mentioned and Allah Ta'ala urges us to be amongst the, the truthful people. And Allah Ta'ala mentions the sadhu. These are those who are truthful. Allah Ta'ala mentions Alif Lam Meem Ahasib al-Nas wa in yutraku wa in yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun wa laqad fatanna al-ladheena man qablihim falayalamanna allahu al-ladheena sadaqu wa layalamanna al-kathibeen that do people think they'll be left alone merely saying we believe and not be tested so the Quran tells us that we're going to be tested in this world so when the test come we're not surprised it's just, it's another day in the dunya. So, they're doing this, they're doing that, and this is happening, and that is happening. It's another day in the dunya. Allah says, this is the abode of tribulations. Allah says, we're going to be tested. Before I took shahada, it was so easy. Before you took shahada, shaitan wasn't, wasn't, wasn't interfering in your life. Because you were doing everything to make him happy. You were fornicating. You were using drugs, you were drinking alcohol, shaitan had no business with you. When you took the shahada and said, I'm going to live an upright life, I'm going to avoid fornication, I'm going to avoid the drugs, I'm going to avoid the, uh, the alcohol, etc., then shaitan said, okay, we're going to see about that. That's why it was so easy. When you're doing everything shaitan is pleased with, he has no motivation to interfere in your life. Once you stand up and say, I'm going to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm going against shaitan now, he's an open enemy. He was your friend before. Allah says shaitan has friends. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ الطَّاقُوا فَقَاتِلُوا أَوْلِيَاءَ الشَّيْطَانِ So Allah ta'ala says, أَوْلِيَاءَ الشَّيْطَانِ The friends of Satan. Satan has his friends. And before you took shahada, and you were doing everything Satan loves, he was your friend. And when you took the shahada and said, now I'm going to live for Allah, and I'm going to try to live a God-fearing life, and I'm going to try to be conscious of Allah, and I'm going to try to please Allah, now you're the enemy of shaitan, and he's your enemy. That's why things were so easy before you took the shahada. But what does the Muslim do? He or she says, this is what Allah promised us. The people think they will be left alone merely saying we believe. Right? That's the shahada. I believe. And they will not be tested. We tested those who preceded them. In order that Allah would show which of them are truthful. And this is why Allah urges us to keep ourselves in the company of the truthful people and helps us to be truthful. We take from their state. We take from their heart. We take from their spiritual energy. And it helps us to be truthful. And this is one of the great tests. Allah says, in order that He will show which of them are truthful. Okay, you said, لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله. You said, I'm going to live like a Muslim. You said, I'm going to put aside all my former ways. So Allah is going to test you to see if you're truthful. وَلِيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ And we will show which of them are liars. So we're going to be tested for truthfulness. 
And so by reading the Qur'an, we understand this. And by understanding it, we, we steal ourselves for the battle. Say, so this is how I'm going to be tested, so I'm going to brace myself. If someone says, I'm going to see if I can knock you down, you're not just going to casually stand there. All right, come on. Ahna wa sahna. You're going to brace yourself. All right, come on. See if you can knock me down. So when we know the test is coming, we have an opportunity to brace ourselves, to steal ourselves. And how do we do that? With the Qur'an. That's the cure of the Qur'an. It cures the disease of dishonesty. It cures the disease of insincerity. It cures the disease of rancor and hatred. Now we have people on Allah Ta'ala knows best the reality of these people blowing up stuff and kidnapping folks. Allah knows best their reality. But we have enough misguided Muslims who are engaging in these actions. Why? Because they're filled with rage. They're filled with rage. And so because they're so filled with rage, they can't distinguish between the lawful and unlawful ways to address that, the cause of that rage. So they just strike out blindly at anyone. We've had temper tantrums and we've lost it, so to speak. But the cure, that's a disease of the heart. The Qur'an cures the, the rage in the heart. And it soothes it. And it gives the believer the, the stability to be able to use his or her intellect without being overwhelmed by emotion. Yes, there's difficulty in all of our lives. We all know difficulty. And we all know our brothers and sisters in other lands, and many lands have it far more difficult than we have it. They face far more oppression than we face. They face far more deprivation than even the poorest of us might face. But they have the Qur'an also. And this is why we, we go to the Qur'an, we turn to the Qur'an. Because it cures the heart. <coughs> we have revealed from the Quran, sit down of the Quran, that which is a cure and a mercy for the believers, and it only increases the disbelievers and their loss. Why? Because they don't benefit from it. So they, they stray, aimlessly stray, wandering to and fro, seeking for the purpose of life. Seeking for pondering and, and, and racking their brains to find some philosophical explanation for the end of all things. And they just go deeper in their wandering and straying. But the believer has direction. And that's the gift of the Qur'an. We have a time coming, Ramadan. A little over a month away, it's the month of the Qur'an. Shahr Ramadan, Qur'an, the month of Ramadan in which the Qur'an has been revealed. This is a tremendous opportunity, brothers and sisters, to do good for our soul. Don't neglect the Qur'an, start now. It's like a relay race. If you get a running start, you're going to run faster. If you get a running start, you're going to run faster. The, the, the record for any relay is greater than the multiplying the fastest time of one runner by four. If you look at the four by 100 meters, if you take the fastest time of one runner who started from a standing start and multiply it by four, it will be much slower than the four people running, where three had a running start. Four by 400, same thing. <coughs> where three of the runners had a running start. So get your running start into Ramadan now. Pick up the Quran now. Get accustomed to parceling off some time in the day to read the Quran now. And then when Ramadan comes, it will be easy. You won't have to spend the first week or two weeks getting accustomed to reading something of the Qur'an. We already have taken care of the preliminaries. And the Qur'an is unimaginable in terms of the blessings. 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned man qara'a harfan min al-Qur'an falahu hasana wal hasanatu bi ashri amthaliha wa la aqulu alif lam mim harf walakin alif harf wa lam harf wa mim harf He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Whoever recites a single letter of the Qur'an will have ten good deeds credited for them. Or will have, will have a good deed. And the good deeds are multiplied ten times. I don't say Alif Lam Lim. Mim is a single letter. Rather, Alif is an individual letter. Lam is an individual letter. And Mim is an individual letter. To emphasize, every single letter is at least ten. And then in Ramadan, that, that 10 is multiplied many times over, as Allah Ta'ala wishes. How much, one letter in a page, how many letters are on a page? In a juz, how many letters in a juz? If you complete the Qur'an once or twice or three times in Ramadan, how many letters have you recited? And in Ramadan, each, each letter, 10 times in its reward. And then Ramadan multiplied 70 times over, at least. It's the month of patience. The patient people will be given their reward with no numerical reward. No numerical limitations. So in the month of patience, we recite the Qur'an. There's no numerical limits as to our reward. If Allah so wills. So brothers and sisters, start now. Start now. The Qur'an is, a, is an incredible source of healing. It's a source of mercy. The mercy is in the healing. It's a mercy for us that we have the Qur'an in our lives. It's a mercy for us that it cures that which is in our hearts. It's a mercy for us. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. It's a mercy in this world. It, 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 cures our ignorance in this world. It gives us direction in this world. And it's a mercy in the next. It said, يُقَالُ لِصَاحِبِ الْقُرْآنِ اقْرَأْ وَارْتَقِي وَرَقْتِلْ كَمَا كُنْتُ تُرَقْتِلُ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ مَنْزِلَكَ عِنْدَ آخِرِ الْآيَةِ تَقْرَأُهَا It will be said to the companion of the Qur'an after his or her death, recite. Recite and then elevate. Iqra wartaqi. And the person will start elevating. And take your time reciting as you took your time in the world. And your station will be the station you will reach after you've recited the last verse that you know. So you just keep elevating until you stop reciting the Quran. This is one of the benefits of the Qur'an in the Akhirah. اِقْرَأْ وَارْتَقِي وَرَقْتِلْ كَمَا كُنْتُ تُرَقْتِلُ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ مَنْزِلَكَ عِنْدَ آخِرِ الْآيَةِ تَقْرَوْهَا What are we waiting for, brothers and sisters? Take advantage of the opportunity. Take advantage of the opportunity. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعْلَمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَا the best of you are the ones who learn the Qur'an and teach it to others. The best of you are the ones who learn the Qur'an and teach it to others. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْفَعُ عَنْ عُمَرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْ قَالْ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْفَعُ بِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ بِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ أَقْوَامًا وَيَرْعُ بِهِ الْآخَرِينَ Allah elevates by means of this, this scripture some people and he debases others. So it's a community of meaning. Allah Ta'ala, uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentions in another hadith, مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٍ مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بُرْيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ يَتْلُونَ قُرْآنَ وَيَتَدَرْسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ that no group of people no group of people gather together in one of the houses of Allah 
يتلون القرآن ويتدارسونه بينه بينه reciting the Quran and studying its meaning between themselves إلا نزلت عليهم 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 السكينة except tranquility descends upon them so this is another cure that the Quran brings when نزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين another cure that brings tranquility even you're driving, you start listening to the Qur'an and you nod off and you have to turn the Qur'an off and turn the news channel back on. Some of you listen to the sports channel. You leave it right there. <laughs> because the Qur'an soothes and you find yourself nodding off. Because it brings sakina and tranquility and calm. And so Allah Ta'ala, the Messenger of Allah says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no one gathers together in one of the houses of Allah reciting the Quran amongst themselves. Alhamdulillah, a beautiful practice here in the Lighthouse Mosque. Sometimes more, sometimes less. At Fajr, the brothers gather together and read the Quran. Or they used to when Hasib was here. <laughs> when Hasib comes back, inshallah, next month, they start back. But this is a beautiful practice. This creates tranquility in the hearts. Prepare the people to go back out into the world. It's a beautiful practice. The sakina comes upon them. إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهُمُ السَّكِينَ وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ And mercy envelops them. وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ And the angels surround them. So this, and this is another cure of the Quran, it cures our hearts of materialism. And reflect on those. The Sakina comes. This is beyond the physical. Mercy envelops them. You can't see the mercy, but it's real. You can feel it in your life. And the angels surround them. You don't see the angels, but they surround you when you recite the Quran. And they become a source of protection. They become a source of guidance. وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَ Forgot the last sentence in the hadith. وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَ And Allah mentions them with the angelic host in His presence. What are we waiting for, brothers and sisters? Again, that's beyond the physical. But when we connect to those meanings, they become more real than the walls of this, of this room. They become more real than the noise of the passing cars. Because that's all part of this transitory world that Allah tells us, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ Everything in this physical world is temporal, is perishing. وَيَبْقَى رَبَّ وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Only the essence of your Lord will remain. That's the haqiqah, that's the reality of things. So the Qur'an connects us with meaning. And it creates a community of meaning. Just as the television creates a community of meaning. Right? The television comes. And people get sucked into the meanings that it introduces into a society. And they gather together and they talk about what this, that, or the other was doing or wearing or their escapades. Did you see the latest episode of this, that, or the other? You know, so-and-so, wasn't their dress really nice or wasn't his head, hair style or his braids or whatever? It creates a community of meaning. And it ties people together on the basis of those meanings, all of which are associated with the material realm. And the Qur'an creates a community of meaning. But it creates a community of meaning that pulls us out of the physical, moves us beyond the physical, and connects us to the spiritual. And when we understand that, we understand Perfectly what it means And Allah mentions them with those in His presence. May Allah bless us to be close to the Qur'an. May Allah bless our hearts to be cured by the cure of the Qur'an. 
May Allah bless us to benefit from the month of Ramadan, the month of the Qur'an. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to prepare for that by picking up and opening our Qur'ans now, reciting it and reflecting on its message. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa li sa'il mu'minin ya qawm astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wassalatu wassalam ala Sayyidi al-Mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Inna sira Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalloon ala al-Nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amun Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim taslima kathira Ya ayyuhal ladhina amrattakullah wa kunu ma'a s-sadiqeen Ya ayyuhal ladhina amrattakullah wa kunu ma'a s-sadiqeen Ya ayyuhal ladhina amrattakullah wa kunu ma'a s-sadiqeen إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا لا تزك قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا افرغ علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا افرغ علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وتوفنا مسلمين واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تعول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصاعب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل سأرا على من ظلمنا وانصرا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصعبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ همنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين وعف عنا وفر لنا ورحمنا أنت مولانا فانصر على القوم الكافرين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل زمان اللهم انصرنا في هذا البلد أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يعصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أقم الصلاة يرحمني ويرحمكم الله